Let me bring up the next comic. You've seen him on Lads on Fox. Let's bring up Rob Ryan. Let's hear it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Amazing. Uh, my name is Rob Ryan. I'm so glad to be here. Uh, we have New Yorkers in the house tonight. Where are the New Yorkers at? Quite a few. Quite a few. Okay. I am a New Yorker myself. I live way uptown in Washington Heights. Uh, it's right across the river from the South Bronx. And if you guys ever get the chance, uh, never go to the South Bronx. It's a very, very real place. I, uh... This is true, I had a show there just a couple weeks ago, and I wasn't sure where the show was exactly, so I was on my computer, I was on uh, Google Maps, and I zoomed down all the way down to the street view. Ever do the street view? Yeah, I got mugged. I got mugged on Google Street View. <laughs> that was my own fault. I should not have been out that late. I don't know what I was thinking. I just kept trying to refresh the screen, but I wasn't fast enough, so. I like to go out to eat probably a little bit more than I should. I was at a Johnny Rockets recently. Are you guys familiar with the Johnny Rockets setup? Yeah? If you don't know, it's, it's kind of weird. It's like a 1950s American-themed burger joint. They have like the red leather couches and the jukebox and all that. And I was in there the other day with a friend of mine having a sandwich and a black couple came in and I was like, oh, are you gonna kick them out? I don't know what the policy <laughs> that one is. Now, they didn't kick him out, so not that authentic, I guess, if we're going for the theme. Okay, now, if you didn't laugh at that joke, uh, you actually make me think you're more racist, and here's why. Because now you're making me think that you're thinking, like, what, that sounds like a legitimate business practice. I don't understand. Is there a joke there, honey? I missed it. I missed the joke. I don't even... So shame on you. White people are very uncomfortable about even being considered racist, especially towards black people. They'll just pretend that they are colorblind. I don't know if you ever come across this, they're like, oh my God, was he black? Oh, I don't even, I don't even know. No, because you see, I don't see color, so I have no idea. Like, what do white people say when they don't want to seem racist towards Asian people? They're just like, oh, I don't see eyes, so I don't know. I, I just see two holes in your face. I have no clue. I don't know. Yeah. I don't see eyes. I don't see color. I just see heat, really. I just see warmth emanating from bodies. Do you remember the movie Predator? I see the way Predator sees. That's how I see. Just red splotches everywhere. And Predator wasn't racist, and neither am I, so... Just shake it off, guys. It's fine. This is how we do, man. This is how we categorize people, right? It doesn't mean that there's hate in our hearts. This happened to me the other day. I'm sure it's happened to everybody. I was just trying to describe someone, a friend of mine, uh, to someone, and they couldn't quite recall who I was talking about. And so I just kind of rattled off three words about the guy real quick. I wasn't even thinking. I was like, yeah, you know, Lenny, he's the short, bald, fat guy, right? And here's the thing. He got it. He mean, they always get it after three. He was like, Lenny, got it. Yep, I know who you're talking about. Got it. Like, guys, that's all we get, our three words. That's, that's it. Like, have you ever considered, and I want you to take a second, and you at home, too, what, what are your three words? What, what three garbage words are just going to pour to someone's mouth to sum you up as a human being, like you're a coat at a lost and found or something? Like me, I know I'm tall and I'm skinny, but I don't even want to know my third because the third's the worst thing you ever thought about yourself. So he's like, oh, Rick, yeah, he's tall. He's got dark hair. He's annoying as hell, though. Have you ever talked to that guy? He's the worst. He's friends with Cindy. Do you know Cindy? She's short. She's got blonde hair. She's a slut. She's kind of a slutty. Like, if I had to do you, sir, I'd be like, oh, yeah, he's got that beard, decent build. Always looks like he's gonna murder you, though. Isn't that weird? He's always got that <laughs> homicidal look in his eye. What is that? Because that's all we get. We get three words, three memes, three descriptions, three things to impress upon people. And if you're black, you really only get two. Uh, <laughs> 
because we all know black is topping that list. Same goes if you're Asian or if you're gay or, or you're a midget. In fact, if you're an Asian gay midget, you're done. That's it. That is who you are forever. No one's ever gonna be like, oh yeah, Tommy's the Asian gay midget. She's what else? Uh, he also likes archery. That was the other thing. I love the diversity, man. That's why I love living in New York. A uh, large gay population in New York, too, uh, especially in Chelsea here. I was down in the subway just the other day, and uh, I heard this delightfully homophobic comment from this woman. <laughs> Apparently, her husband's brother got hit on by a gay guy, and this just, just blew her mind. She was hysterical. She was like, oh my God. And like, you know Robert. Robert is super, super straight. And there's another term for super, super straight. It's gay. Can we all agree on that one? Nobody needs two supers before the word straight. To me, the sexuality spectrum is kind of like a game of Pac-Man. If you go too far to one side, you pop back up on the other side. And here's the thing too, guys. Gay people, they are the wrong people to be bigoted against because they have what I like to call a very high karma factor. And by that, I mean if you truly have hate in your hearts towards homosexuals, chances are you're probably gonna have a gay kid. I feel like that's just how <laughs> the universe works. That's how God even decides. He's like, this is gonna be hilarious. And that's what he does. Thank you. And the really homophobic ones, like, you know, they're like, hey, get out of my barn, like those guys. <laughs> people think are gay. Those conversations happen. You've definitely pulled your friends aside before, ladies especially, and been like, I don't know, I feel like. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like, I feel like Rich might be gay. Do you know, like, it's just weird because he hates them so much. <laughs> it's almost like he's repressing like an inner, like an inner gay thing. Does that make any sense? And that happens with no other group. No one's ever like, I think he might be Mexican. I don't know, we don't know. <laughs> it's just that he hates them so much. It's weird, it's like he's repressing an inner Mexican. He's always talking about that wall and how big it should be. And we don't see him on the weekends, so we don't know what he's up to. We don't know what he does. I'm not sure. People get things wrong all the time. I was uh, having an argument with a friend of mine the other day, and she was going on this tirade about men and about how men rule the world and about how men run everything, and she was going on and on. She was like, yeah, well, go ahead, look around you, right? Everything you see is phallic-shaped, isn't it? Yeah, go ahead, look at our bombs and our rockets and our missiles, all phallic-shaped, clearly man inventions. Now, guys, I'm no rocket scientist, but I have the feeling that even if the roles were reversed and, and women ran everything, I just don't feel like a vagina-shaped rocket <laughs> would do the trick. I, I feel like there'd be a lot of wind resistance. I don't know. Because you got to think like an engineer, right? And simplicity is key. And you have to admit, the phallic shape, <laughs> very simple design. Like, God did not try very hard when he made men. He definitely took some more time with you women. You are creme brulee. We are ramen noodle. I get that. <laughs> and to be perfectly honest with you, ladies, before you clap, you got a lot of crap going on down there that, frankly, I just don't want in our rockets, OK? <laughs> Think of every man missile ever invented. It's always three, two, one, blast off. That's it. No vagina missile's gonna take off like that. It's gotta be in the right mood. And uh, it's not gonna count down from three. It's gonna count down from like a thousand. When it finally does get down to three, two, one, it won't be the push of a button or the turn of a key. There's gonna be cranks and levers and pressure release valves all intricately timed. And if you screw up one, you gotta start all over again. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's one poor, sorry son of a bitch trying to man the entire thing. The commander's on the phone. He's like, how come the missile didn't launch, soldier? He's like, uh, I don't know, sir. I don't think 
we talked to it enough. Uh, there weren't enough candles. Uh, I think it's still mad about last week, to be honest with you. You guys have been great, man. My name is Rob Ryan.